Several weeks after local brewery, distillery, and winery owners voiced their concern over a bill that would astronomically increase the amount of taxes paid per gallon produced of their respective products, a ray of light emerges. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, the property tax relief bill is LB314, and it would have exponentially increased the tax paid on every gallon of beer, wine, and liquor produced in Nebraska. This week, bill introducer Senator Tom Breesey proposed an amendment to his bill that removes the excise tax, a decision that came after much discussion with craft brewers, vineyards, and local distilleries across the state. Last month, we spoke with Joe Margheim of Flyover Brewery, who cringed when he saw the proposal would have made Nebraska's tax rate on beer jump from 20th highest in the country to the highest tax state. Phil Mitchell of Great Plains Distillery said the additional $8.50 per gallon for his whiskey and vodka would have priced him out of the market and halted his current plans of relocating to downtown Scotch Bluff. We also spoke with Ryan Massey of Papa Moon Vineyards, whose tax rate as a farm winery would have gone from $0.06 cents a gallon of wine to a whopping $2.62 per gallon. Breezy said on his bill, a tax directly on one of the state's fastest and growing industries was not the answer for property tax relief. The same tax rate is also currently included in Senator Kurt Friesen's LB 497, but Gearing Senator John Stinner says he doesn't think it stands a chance. Yeah, uh, it, it will be eliminated. That's basically what I've heard. You know, we don't have to fight a contentious battle, and frankly, they put it in there as a revenue source that nobody was really settled on. So uh, the craft brewery side of things, if there is any excise tax, we'll try to figure out how we how we maybe have some kind of production tax credit that offsets it in some fashion. But um, I don't think it survives. I, I really don't. Either one. Senator Breesey says the amendment would include a 3% sales tax at the register, which would be a fair across-the-board tax, and it would still collect money from consumers rather than producers to try to achieve property tax relief for Nebraskans. Well, the committee working on organizing the Tour de Nebraska's swing through Gehring and Scotch Bluff is getting busy. They're planning on how to welcome an expected 500 bicyclists later this year. The group held their first formal organizational meeting on Thursday, starting to discuss subjects such as lodging, rest stops, and post-bike activities for participants. Garing Visitors Bureau Director Carla Needen Streaks says that they are also looking for community residents who want to get involved. It's going to be a great opportunity for a new audience of people to be in our communities. Everything from the smallest things of making sure that we've got uh, people welcoming the riders at all the different locations when they arrive in our community, um, to helping us with some of the refreshment stops, uh, some of the entertainment opportunities. The 32nd Tour to Nebraska will start in Sydney on June 18th, with overnight stays in Gehring and Scottsbluff, marking the first time the event will take place in the Panhandle. Streak says, like the 2017 eclipse, this is another opportunity to showcase the area and her hospitality to a large group of new people. And KNEB has announced two classic country acts will headline our third annual Oregon Trail Days concert in Gehring this summer. Grammy Award winning artist Diamond Rio and country group Restless Heart will perform at KNEB's annual Oregon Trail Days concert on Saturday, July 13th at Five Rocks Amphitheater in Gehring. Tickets will go on sale two weeks from today, March 1st at 10 a.m. Cost is $25 for general admission and $40 for reserve seating. Diamond Rio has 19 top 10 hits, while Restless Heart was a staple of the 80s, churning out six straight number one singles and tallying 15 top 10 hits of their own. Well, coming up after the break, Bill Boyer will be in with your weekend weather forecast. Stick around. KNEB.TV News will be back right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we understand that you have a busy life, and that means you don't always have time to come to the bank. 
That's why we offer user-friendly online and mobile banking with features such as iPay, recurring transfers, and mobile deposit. So you can bank how you want, when you want to. Whether you prefer to bank in person, over the phone, or online, Platte Valley Bank makes it easy to take care of your finances. No matter what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5E tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5E means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me. Visit 21st Century Equipment in Alliance, Torrington, Scottsbluff, and Bridgeport, or visit 21stCenturyEquipment.com. Arby's two for five mix and matches here for a limited time. How limited? If I tell you, will you still come right now versus putting it off until oops, the deal is over? Arby's, we have the meat for sandwiches. This is KNEB.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meats. Well, just as a reminder, it is still winter, if you had forgotten. Yeah, it's still out there. We had uh, some snowfall early this morning, but we warmed up. We're going to cool back down again tonight. Tomorrow, kind of a transition day, as we're going to see a windy day, and then we're going to turn colder. Both Sunday and Monday looking pretty cold. You can't rule out some flurries. It's going to be cool, really, all of next week. And uh, some snow showers look like they're coming late in the week. 46 yesterday, that was at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we dropped down to 21 uh, before, uh, right before midnight, got even colder than that uh, as we got into this morning, and temps were pretty cold out there. No precip officially through midnight, nine hundredths, I believe, uh, in the rain gauge uh, as we melted that about an inch and a half, two inches of snow down. So we're going to be right about normal when we add in what uh, we got since midnight. 44 in Denver, 41 in Lyman right now. That mild air right in our area, much colder here to the north and east. One in Watertown, 12 in Norfolk. Look at our area, though. Some uh, 20s, teens even, Valentine, Mullen. Then we get to an area of here, 20s, 30s, even a couple of 40-degree readings showing up on the map, including right here in Scotts Bluff. That's because winds are out of the southeast here versus northeasterly winds where it's kind of cooler and uh, we're going to see that cold air start to work its way back in tomorrow. Wind chills, not much to worry about uh, here in the southwestern portions of the Panhandle. Four in Valentine, eight in Mullen, ten right now in Gordon. Let's put future cast in motion. We have a few clouds uh, that are going to filter in and across the area overnight. Can't rule out a hit or miss flurry or snow shower. Snow, any uh, snow accumulations are going to be minor through the weekend but I think we could see some flurries really any day over the weekend. Lows tonight, upper teens to near 20, single digits in the sand hills. For tomorrow then, we'll start the day partly to mostly cloudy. We'll have some clearing skies at times, and then by tomorrow afternoon, the winds are gonna pick up, get pretty strong here across the region. We'll have to keep a close eye on those winds, but generally speaking, things are looking pretty uh, gusty wind-wise as we go through the evening hours, uh, afternoon hours tomorrow, and temperatures are gonna be in the 30s upper 20s, uh, even some low 20s in the sand hills. That's the last of the nice days because it's going to change abruptly uh, as we go Sunday and into Monday. 20, clear to partly cloudy. Can't rule out a flurry tonight. Can't rule out a flurry tomorrow either. Windy conditions. Winds will be out of the southwest. They'll become northwest and drop those temps in the afternoon at 20 to 30 miles an hour. We'll bottom out in the teens on Saturday night only to get to near 20 or so, both Sunday and Monday with a few flurries possible. Lows in the single digits. Mid next week, maybe into the mid 30s, but again, more chances of snow showers late Thursday and into Friday of next week as we stay pretty active and certainly cold and below normal temps here for the next seven days. Arby's two for five mix and matches here for a limited time. How limited? If I tell you, will you still come right now versus putting it off until oops, the deal is over? Arby's, we have the meat for sandwiches. Shopping local is great for building our community. At TC and More, they offer the newest trends and latest fashions. They have new items arriving daily. Enjoy complimentary coffee as they show you these new arrivals. New home decor, clothing, flags, jewelry, willow tree figurines. Don't forget their wide variety of teaching supplies, large selection of games, as well as homemade lotions and soaps. Thank you for thinking of TC and More for those special items. TC and More, 1621 Broadway in beautiful downtown Scottsbluff. 
With Viero's entertainment trifecta package, never miss the big play. Work on becoming the new and improved you, or invite friends to compete in the game. Get the power of free. Get two new lines of HD Plus and internet service, and we will give you Sling TV, an Air TV player, and a big screen TV, all for free. Get the entertainment trifecta package today. Viera Wireless, keeping you connected to the content you love. Welcome back. A former Gehring man who used to give private art lessons out of his home is accused of raping a 15-year-old student on two separate occasions back in 2014. 45-year-old Stephen Barraza, now of Englewood, Colorado, is charged in Scottsbluff County with first-degree sexual assault of a child. Court documents say Barraza had sex with the girl on two separate occasions, once at his Gehring home and once at a local hotel. He is now being detained at the Scottsbluff County Detention Center on a $150,000 bond at 10%. He was scheduled to make his first appearance on the charge today in Scottsbluff County Court. Now, if convicted, Barraza would be facing 20 years to life in prison. Sticking with the courts, as the 24-year-old Scottsliff man charged in a September attack on East Overland that left a woman unconscious has been sentenced in Scottsliff County District Court. Yesterday, Jose Lara Jr. pleaded guilty to an amended Class 3A felony charge of attempted second-degree assault. During his hearing, they proceeded with sentencing, and he received 145 days in jail with 83 days credit for time already served. In addition, he will also have to serve a term of 12 months of post-release supervision. Well, Nebraska troopers have seized 100 pounds of marijuana and arrested several people in five traffic stops in less than 24 hours on I-80. The Nebraska State Patrol says the first stop occurred Tuesday afternoon in Kimball, and the last was on Wednesday morning. A trooper on Wednesday stopped one driver traveling nearly 115 miles per hour, and the largest bust included 85 pounds of marijuana hidden in a TV. And at last weekend's KNB Farm and Ranch Expo in Mitchell, it wasn't just exhibitors on hand. Farm Director Shabella Guzman has more. The KNB Farm and Ranch Team Sort was held Saturday at the Scottsbluff County Fairgrounds in Mitchell. Leslie Snyder, coordinator of the event, says there were around 100 runs, which included adult and youth riders. It's growing a little bit. Uh, we have people kind of from all over. Some people from Cheyenne came out today, so we were happy that the roads were good. And they, they came, uh, they go to sanctioned events, so I'm happy they came that we can get a little tips from them and just kind of keep growing and learning. The youth riders were first to ride, with riders as young as 5 up to 14, followed by the adult riders. Among the riders was Val Baker of Minotaur and her horse H.H. Diamond Rio. Um, she's my actual team roping horse, but brought her here today to uh, have something different to do with her. Keeps them in shape. She's real quick, and that's what you kind of want for this kind of event, and uh, something that's uh, going to kind of stay with you, and you can point them where you need them. She's pretty happy about going to cows. She's not very happy about standing still. <laughs> the sorting took place inside the pavilion, which is heated, with calves supplied by Burford Land and Cattle. Baker tells us more on how her and Rio prepared for the event. Well, for this event, we uh, actually just sort cattle on our ranch. We actually do this for real. Um, they don't have numbers. You just have numbers in the tags, and we practice doing that. We uh, push them from one pen to another, and that's really what this is about is ranch sorting. It it's actually has practical application and uh, we work with them every day. The results for the youth division include first and second place Hannah Winters and Keith Hall. Third place was Hannah Winters and Brianna Hall. In the open division, first place was Frank Stoffer and Keith Hall. Second place, Joe Ferguson and T.C. Wills. And third was Keith Hall and Brianna Hall. Right ahead, Hannah and Alex are in with a special edition of Friday Five, looking back at 150 years of the University of Nebraska system. They'll be back with that right after this on KNEB.TV News. The Mixing Bowl and Gearing serving breakfast and lunch every day using Grandma Ruth's recipes for five years. Stop for lunch and try a Cali Turkey BLT or one of our gourmet burgers. Have a homemade cabbage burger or butterball soup on Thursdays. Or try our weekend brunch and have cinnamon roll pancakes or the roasted duck benedict. Stop by the Mixing Bowl on your way to work and grab a freshly baked muffin, grebel, or Dana Kuga out of our bakery case and a specialty coffee made just for you. The Mixing Bowl, 1945 10th Street in Gearing, bringing great food and great people together. 
Logos and Gearing is the place to get all of your school spirit gear, personalized gifts, and promotional items for your business and employees and banners for any special event. Logos is also the only place to stop for custom screen printing or embroidery. You can even design it yourself on their interactive website. Stop into Logos today. They'll design it, print it, and have it to you in no time. There's no job too big or small for Logos. That's Logos in Gearing. in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming. This is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. 150 years of the University of Nebraska. In this Friday 5 edition, we'll travel back in time. And we'll travel across the campus that launched it all. This special presentation of Friday 5 is presented by the Nebraska Corn Board. 1869 is the year and the University of Nebraska became the name. 150 years ago, the university was established by the Nebraska legislature. The federal government granted the university over 136,000 acres to build an institution. There were 130 students enrolled for the very first academic year and all classes were held in University Hall, which sat right here until 1948. Fast forward three short years later to 1872, the Agriculture College was established and the University Farm followed shortly thereafter. For $55 an acre, the Board of Regents purchased the 320-acre Moses Culver Farm. That farm eventually became UNL East Campus. A tradition that runs deep in our state dates back to 1890, Big Red Corn Husker football. Now, we weren't actually the Scarlet and Cream until 1892, and we weren't the Corn Huskers until 1900. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, that's right, we were originally the Bug Eaters, but the very first team was actually known as the Old Gold Knights. They played their first game against Omaha YMCA and won with a score of 10 to 0. Now let's get back to 1917. That's when Varsity Dairy made its debut that is now called the Dairy Story. When Varsity Store opened, it served an all-you-can-drink milk for five cents as long as you brought your own cup. Today, the Dairy Store now serves ice cream, cheeses, meats, all made by UNL students. Over time, the University of Nebraska added four campuses, UNO, UNK, UNMC, and NCTA. In total, this academic school year, there are just short of 52,000 students enrolled. Thanks for helping us celebrate 150 years of University of Nebraska. And thanks to the Nebraska Corn Board for presenting Friday Five. Have a good weekend and go, go Big, Big Red! Red. This is Mike. Mike likes his car, Mike likes to save money, and Mike likes to breathe. So Mike fills up with E15 with 15% American ethanol. The clean octane in E15 gives Mike the performance he wants from his engine and the clean air he wants for his family. Better yet, E15 costs less at the pump. Higher octane, cleaner air, lower cost. E15 sure gives Mike a lot to like. Discover E15 with American ethanol.
Heilbrunn State Farm agent is here to protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services, Care Heilbrunn and her team make it simple to bring together what matters to you. Regional West is one of three level two trauma centers in Nebraska. We have all the resources here 24 hours a day to address any traumatic injury. From emergency medical services to advanced medical imaging and surgery to acute care and rehabilitation. It's comforting to know that if an accident happens here, our families, our friends, our neighbors, and even we ourselves will get expert trauma care and rehabilitation services right here at Regional West. It's a friendly town, that's for sure. Not too big, not too small. Seems like everybody knows your name. Let's take a peek at what's happening on your weekend community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's cause it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, uh, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaf Heads. It is never too early to start planning for retirement, and working with an experienced financial advisor can put you on the right path. At Platte Valley Investment Center, our team of financial advisors will work with you every step of the way to maximize your retirement income. Call me, Jody Rosiska, or Rick Morehouse, financial advisors to set up your free no obligation consultation. Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Life well planned. And finally tonight, before we break for the weekend, it's once again time to honor the Platte Valley Company's Star Student of the Week. For 
For this week's Star Student of the Week, we make our inaugural appearance at Minotaur Elementary for an all-school assembly, where Principal Jody Wolf introduced PVC associate Travis Sell, who read off the accolades of this week's honoree. This student was nominated not only because she always gets to sit at the principal's table, but she's also willing to help anyone in need, is an amazing student, and does well in school. So today, the Star Student of the Week is first grader, Janet Lohr. Come on up here. First grader Janet Lohr came front and center to accept her Star Student of the Week t-shirt, and afterwards, it was time for a little Q&A to find out what makes the Star Student tick. All right, Janet, congratulations. Were you excited to be the winner of Star Student of the Week this week? Yes. Yeah? You didn't expect it at all? No. No? So on your nomination form, it said that you get to sit at the principal's table a lot. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing. Good thing? Why do you get chosen to sit with the principal so often? Because we were supposed to be good, and I'm always good. Oh, well, that, that's definitely a good thing. Um, and it also said that you like to help out people during class. Can you uh, maybe tell me a time that you've helped uh, a, a fellow student of yours? His name's AJ Ian, and when he gets something wrong, I help him out. Yeah? And so you're pretty good in class? Yes. Yeah? Janet says she keeps plenty busy with her brothers and sisters, and adds that she keeps her artistic skills up with drawing and painting in her spare time. And I like to make crafts at in home. Ooh, fun. What kind of crafts do you make? Usually flowers. And in the classroom, she says she has a favorite subject as well. Math. We get to do, do things with all these subjects. It's really fun. Congratulations once again to Minotaur Elementary first grader Janet Lohr, the Platte Valley Company's Star Student of the Week. And if you'd like to nominate a deserving K-12 student to be the next Star Student of the Week, you can find nomination forms online at www.pvbank.com. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.